This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, November 18, 1966, Sandy Koufax, one of the greatest left handed pitchers of a generation, had to retire. He was an icon. And he had just pitched the Dodgers to a World Series appearance in 1966. Sadly, though, they got swept by the Baltimore Orioles, who somehow, in some way, took them out. But anyway, Sandy Koufax couldn't believe his luck. He was doing quite well, but then, you know, his career ended awkwardly. Well, Koufax is a Jewish ball player who was famous for skipping game one of the World Series to observe Yom Kippur. And that was referenced in a Simpsons episode when Krusty tells his newborn puppy to pee on Sandy Koufax's star on the Jewish Walk of Fame. He refused to pitch on Yom Kippur. I did five shows that night, meaning that Krusty's probably just Jewish for the perks. Regardless, now, yeah, the Dodgers did lose that game, but still won the World Series of So anyway, he was a decent pitcher and all that. Unfortunately, for some strange reason, Koufax wasn't the best guy around. So anyway, actually, Koufax had a signing bonus when he signed in the majors that made him a bonus baby, which meant that he couldn't be demoted for two years from the Major League roster. So Tommy Lasorda went to AAA. At that time, it was sort of. Anyway, Koufax tried his best and all that. And Koufax was part of the 55 Dodgers that went to the World Series. But he didn't appear in the series. Anyway, Koufax had a lot of problems and all of that. So, anyway. Koufax, by 1960, was so despondent, he wanted to be traded. However, later on, he would pitch a one-hit shutout in Pittsburgh. He was actually 8-13, and 13, and he actually was considering quitting to be an electronics businessman. But Kovax kept trying again in 1961. He was in a better condition and all that. However, Kovax was told in 1961 that he needed to change his windup because Kovax's windup was that he would rear back so far he would lose sight of the target. And actually, it was Larry. Sh it was Norm Sherry, a catcher for a farm team at the Dodgers, who told Colfax to improve his control by just throwing just a little bit less hard. So basically, take a few miles per hour off his pitches, and it worked. Colfax had thrown a lot of no hitters and all that. Well, he threw no hit innings, but he struck out the side. So Colfax broke out in '61. He won 18 games and had 269 strikeouts, leading the league in strikeouts, and breaking the NL record of 267. So anyway, he did pretty well for himself. And it also helped Colfax by 1962 that the Dodgers would move from LA, the LA Coliseum, which, let's face it, should not have had a baseball field in it, because, you know, LA Coliseum is known for its Olympics hosting, and home to UCLA and USC in college football. Well, UCLA moved to the Rose Bowl Stadium in 1980. But anyway, yeah, because, you know, the left field line was 250 feet, which wasn't good for lefties. But then it moved to pitcher-friendly Dodger Stadium. So you know by then that in 62, 63, 64, and 65, he had thrown a no-hitter each time. And in 1965, his no-hitter was a perfect though. However, Koufax would start having problems by 65. His entire left arm would be black and blue from hemorrhaging. 
So anyway, he was told that he would eventually lose full use of his arm. So Colfax said he would not throw it all between games, but he only did it once. Colfax would resort to Amperin with coding for the pain that he took every night and during the fifth inning. He would take an inflammation inflammation medication and atomic bomb before each game and soaked his arm in a tub of ice afterwards. But Colfax still made it through. And all that. So, anyway. It didn't matter. And all that. Now, Colfax did hold out, had a hold on before the 66 season. But anyway, yeah. Fantastic career. Unfortunately, though, because of his arthritic elbow. Left elbow, he had to retire from the Dodgers at age. Well, at age 36, he became the youngest player to get to the Hall of Fame. So anyway, it was shocking that you know a guy like Sandy Colfax could get hurt. So, yeah, so he retired. It was sad. The Dodgers would have to move on without their star. Lefty Don Drysdale pitched a few more years with the Dodgers. Heck, in 1968, Drysdale. Put up 58 scoreless innings in pitching, which was pretty good. But yeah, the Dodgers lost some sip, and the Dodgers really worked that, that decent until the well, they got to the World Series in 1974, but they went through a period of terribleness. But yeah, Kovacs was still a good pitcher, but it was understandable. I mean, you got to remember that a lot of surgeries that pitchers go through these days. We're not available in the late 60s, so things change. Like Tommy John surgery. The first successful one was 1974, seven years after Koufax's retirement. So anyway, Sandy Koufax still was a fantastic pitcher. And, you know, he went out with a bang. I mean, his last season was a great one. Even though that the Dodgers lost the World Series, at least he went out on his terms. And he went out a winner. And he can't beat that. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.